Hi, Mono Sambolani. Hello, how's it? And shalom. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of uh, the Vlogs edition here on the BDL show. This is Vlog 100. Vlogs, of course, are a short iteration of the ordinary show, but this one might be a bit longer given the topic that we're going to discuss to uh, night this evening. Uh, first time I'm doing a vlog in the evening, that's why it took me back a little bit. Uh, the simple equation is this one. This government is wholly intent on you, the ordinary citizen becoming a victim of crime in this country. That is, this government, the ANC government, via the Begi, the Ashat Tele, has every intention of you the ordinary faith, flag, family, and freedom type South African becoming an easier target, an easier victim for the uh, murderers, the rapers, the robbers in this country who care nothing for your life, your liberty, and your property rights. That is the cold, hard truth. When you look at a situation like the one we're currently in, where there is a proposal there is currently a proposal and really a, a, an amendment bill being put forward uh, to, uh, amongst many other things which are problematic in the bill. And I've got two guests who will help me unpack it. But the, the, the central one and the one that really pops out to me is this. The idea that self-defense will no longer be a valid reason to own a gun in South Africa under these new draft legislations. And as I said, there is a whole host of other things which are deeply problematic in this bill uh, from essentially, yeah, let me not get into that. I will allow my guest to get into that particular point. Speaking about my guest, I can see you guys in the comment section. Thank you. Remember, as you join the stream, please, 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 please hit that like button. It is super, super important. It helps get the show out. And remember, you can also like uh, the stream if you're watching on Twitter. I'm simulcasting this on YouTube, Facebook, and of course on Twitter. So please hit that like stream as you're joining and of course share the link as we go ahead. I did mention early on, excuse me, that I have uh, two guests on the stream with me. I have with me an old favorite, a chap who you have seen here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. This is another chap who is a go-to for me when it comes to all things uh, gun rights and really self-defense. I'm talking, of course, about Tim Flack. There he is on screen. Hey. He is now, uh, he's gone solo now. He's, um, Tim, what are you doing now? Uh, well, basically, I'm, I'm working for my myself. I'm doing uh, communications from home. Uh, representing various organizations at the moment. I'm, I'm doing work for Dear South Africa, and I've been asked to put in proposals for a few uh, gun lobbies uh, to assist them with their stuff. And then I've got a few private clients that I've been working with for, for a, quite a few years, like the South African National Defense Union, um, and a few private uh, private people. Brother, that sounds absolutely fantastic. Mazel tov to you on going solo, and all Thanks. the best, and indeed, uh, you are a, a valuable resource that we're going to use tonight. Let me bring my other guest on the stream from the ever wonderful organization Girls on Fire. I did feature them on, uh, can't think of it now, one of the BDL shows uh, a few weeks ago. You can check that out if you go onto the Big Daddy Liberty page. I'm talking, of course, about Utsepi Mekwa. Utsepi, welcome to the show. There you are on screen. And uh, good evening. Good evening and thank you and hello to your guests out there. I'm happy to be uh, here. Good to, good to have you. Uh, very good to have you. Guys, let's jump straight into it. And uh, I set the scene out at the beginning of the stream where I said the, 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 the bottom line really is this. It's two broad things that the South African who's watching this show right now needs to understand. Number one, there is a wholehearted attempt by a political elite in this country who themselves, for themselves, or righteously have the best VIP protection, literally a, a phalanx, an army, a mini army, if you will, of armed bodyguards to look after themselves. But for the rest of us, the faith, flag, family, and freedom type South African, oh, no, 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 they'll say. For you, you must face the criminals, uh, the murderers, the rapists, uh, the robbers, the armed robbers in this country. You must face them alone. Because as things stand, the South African Police Service itself has admitted that it, it simply cannot 
um, uh, fulfill its mandate. It feels, it has told us rather, it didn't feel, it's told us that it is overstretched. In fact, let me not waffle up on about that. Let, let's, let's listen to the police commissioner himself, Ukeke Stolle, who spoke two years ago already in parliament saying exactly this. Just stand by, guys. It's just important for me, uh, adding from the secretariat and from the minister, I still want to repeat the chapter 12 NDP caption due to the, the collapse of the national crime prevention strategy. The SAPS became an all-purpose agency with an overstretched mandate impossible to fulfill. It's still standing like that in the NDP. So I want to repeat the SAPS mandate is overstretched. Two, it's impossible to fulfill. There you have it. Again, the police commissioner himself, in his own words, and it's funny how the ass guy just gets up mid-sentence, like, all right, I'm done up in here, um, <laughs> and, and literally leaves the room. That punk, um, oh man, I shouldn't even say that, because, you know, let, let me control my anger <laughs> on this particular show. So, Pete, let me begin with you. This is an absolute disaster, because, again, we're, we're talking about ordinary South Africans here who recognize the reality that was shared by the police commissioner, that SAPs simply are not going to be there in your time of need. And really, safety is not only your right as enshrined, enshrined, enshrined excuse me, in the constitution, but also your right to life is enshrined in the constitution. Why then do we see an amendment like this, which seeks to take away your ability to defend those two rights? Number one, it boggles the mind. That's, that's first and foremost why you would even do that. To make matters worse, you go and reduce police visibility by three billion and increase VIP protection. Who are we protecting here and for what? That is the biggest question. And you're leaving your most vulnerable citizens, us, the women of South Africa. You know, the president spoke about the second pandemic of gender-based violence. Is this not enabling it? Is this not promoting it? It, mm -hmm. it? it smacks in the face of every citizen and every woman who's fighting for the right to life right now. Absolutely. And again, I've made the point before on this show, on multiple episodes, in fact, that, you know, with, with the high levels of gender-based violence in this country, with the high levels of crime generally in this country, I am in firm belief or I'm in a firm advocate rather for women and again the more vulnerable segments of our society to be the sort of people who investigate whether they want to be a gun owner by firstly getting the training getting proficient and then when they decide to getting a, a, a firearm Sebi, I know I'm, I'm speaking to the converted when it comes to you but have you seen an increase on fellow ladies taking up gun ownership We've seen an absolute surge. Um, you know, at first women come uh, to us uh, not knowing what to expect. And we said up front, not a, a firearm is not for everybody, but it is a tool. And if you want to use this tool, we will help you. We will help you use it and legally so. We'll help you get licensed. We'll help you get competent. We'll help you train up on it and, and so forth. That is our mandate. But our biggest, biggest mandate is to ensure that you as a woman are no longer a victim. It is our slogan. We do not want women to be sitting in some corner and waiting for some savior on a white horse to save them. You know, we're saying to women, stand up fight for your rights, fight for your right to life, fight for your families. And if mm -hmm. a firearm is your tool of choice, we are here to ensure that you do it correctly. You are trained, you are competent. You go through the loops, that, 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 all these loops that we go through uh, by, by government, that we will put through all of this just to ensure that it's done correctly. Absolutely. Absolutely, Tim, I must come to you because, again, we, we've had this conversation, Tim, you know, um, yeah. 
obviously from a sort of different perspective because on the episode that I had you on, we were just talking about, you know, the accessibility, the really difficult nature of the accessibility of trying to become a gun owner and why it's important for ordinary citizens, you know, to go through the proper channels, you know, the, the various legal gun shops in this country who have excellent guys manning those desks who can assist people in doing this. But it does seem as though we now have a situation where the government has played its hand. And it's basically saying, you know what, we've actually never wanted you to own the guns. Well, I, I sort of feel it's always kind of been that way. They've kind of alluded towards it in, in previous iterations of the of the firearms amendment bill. Um, when I first joined GOSA, the very big topic at the time was a leaked draft of the bill. And and part of that was taking Section 13 or self-defense as, as a way, as, as, a, as, a, as a means to own a firearm. Um, so government hasn't, this isn't a new concept. Um, they've been buggering around and, and, and trying to dabble and take away our rights to own firearms uh, for, for a very, very long time. Um, it's been a problem since the, the Firearms Act uh, came into being uh, in 2000. So it's not a new thing. Um, and my question is, why has it taken so long for us to all realize that? Um, why, why is it that every single time this pops up, everyone sort of acts surprised and everyone jumps in and has this, uh, this call to action. Now, all of a sudden we must fight for our firearms, uh, when it's been the name of the game and, and the, and, and the call to action from government and from the civilian secretariat from day one, uh, just going, going back to, going back to what you said in the, uh, when you opened, uh, the show. Uh, and it goes back to gun control. It was something I was going to read. Is if you're if you're for gun control, then you're not guns, because guns will be needed to disarm people. You'll need the police guns. Um, it's not that you're anti-gun. You're actually very pro-gun. You just believe that the own that only government, which is so reliable, honest, moral, and virtuous, should be allowed to have. <laughs> there is no such thing as gun control. There is only the centralization of gun ownership and in the hands of a small political elite and their minions. And that's where we're going to sit. And that's where we're going to sit if we don't, if we don't stop uh, continuing on the fight. Uh, and I, I was about to say, that, that, that right there is the absolute crux of it, Tim. Every South African should be asking themselves the question, what is this politician fixing to do to me that he feels the need to disarm me and prevent me from protecting my family and indeed my life, liberty, and my property rights. I'm gonna repeat that question. I'm gonna repeat that question. What is that filthy politician fixing to do to me that they felt the need that they must remove my ability to defend myself, not only from the mm -hmm. common petty criminal, but of course also from the state, which brings me to this notion of uh, a comment that was made by the asshat to Begitele himself today. Um, let me see if it pops up on screen. Yes, there it is. Uh, let's try it again. There it is. This is a, a, a piece. This is now him responding effectively to what has been a groundswell of um, ordinary South Africans saying, actually, no, we don't want this uh, petition and really there's a lot of good work being done at the moment we'll get into that by various organizations to get commentary in by ordinary South Africans but this is the the first salvo that was fired by who asked had himself by saying well you know this is him of course uh, new gun and uh, self-defense rules um, will only reduce uh, crime in South Africa let me just go to a direct quote by him in this regard where he says well you know um, excuse me I just need to find it um, 20 points oh, if you can get it. 20 points if, if you can get his accent as well. <laughs> um, that's actually a really funny one. He sounds like he has like, like, a, like a nasal spray in like 24 <laughs> 7 every time he speaks. Um, but, you know, he, he basically condescendingly says, well, you know, the interest and vast number of comments received so far indicates, he says, that South Africans are making their voices heard in the matter. Yes, Taylor, but what are those South Africans saying? Doesn't talk mm. about that. Then he continues to say, well, you know, uh, the police ministry, uh, ministry basically said the rationale behind the proposed changes are to respond to the overarching policy principles of the non-proliferation of firearms in South Africa and the strengthening of the process of uh, uh, relating to applications, excuse me, and uh, ammunitions and the like. We urge the public, open quote, we urge the public to continue 
uh, with this momentum. All comments will be scrutinized. And here's the kicker. All comments will be scrutinized and those useful will be incorporated to strengthen the provisions of the bill. Does that not just tell you the story of what, uh, what exactly their intent is on this, uh, Zepi? Here's a minister already saying at the, the get-go that only the comments that we find useful um, will be incorporated mm. into this bill. What comments do you think those will be? Useful to them. Useful for me to hand in my fire mm. up. Useful to them to be sitting behind high walls with the best security on planet Earth while mm. I get slaughtered in the streets of South Africa. Guns he goes around. People. You know, and all that. You know, let's not, <laughs> let's whisper it while we add it. You know, mm. he goes around with an army of people around him. Exactly. With rifles, exactly. by the way. With rifles, by the I, way. And let, let me add some numbers to this thing. Um, just to show you, dear viewer, that this really is a battle between you, the ordinary citizen who gets crumbs, and them, the politicians who get the creme de la creme, the best of the best. Let's, let's add some numbers to, to this whilst we're at it. On that same, in that same meeting, Ukraine um, then basically outlines the budget for the police and reveals a, a shocker, an absolute shocker, mm -hmm. as, by pointing out that actually, you know, the budget for the South African police services it, itself, the overall budget, is being slashed by 2.5 billion rand. But guess what? What the politicians get of that slice, that is the VIP protection unit, that's the men in black who you often see in wonderful German sedans. No, 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 they're gonna get a budget increase of 1.7%, bringing their lion's share to 1.7 billion. Tim, this is just the, the oxymoron that we're dealing with here, isn't it? It's the idea that for the ordinary citizen, or rather, let's put it this way, it's less money for the SAPs and more crime for us as citizens. No, exactly. And it, 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 it goes back to uh, your basic principles of policing. You've got something called the Pelian principles of policing. And I wrote about it today in a letter that I was busy writing. And the ninth principle goes to, and it says, to recognize always that the test of police efficiency is the absence of crime and disorder. And what we, what are we sitting with in South Africa? We're sitting with with crime and disorder, and it's and it's in abundance. Um, these guys are just going to make it worse. Um, the, the, it, there's a common thing in SAPS that if they want to solve crime, um, they have a meeting. My fa my father was a police officer for, for many many years and worked in it was a high ranking police officer. Said whenever they wanted to con combat crime, they had a meeting. Um, and and obviously in these meetings, they've decided that well, well let's cut our visible policing. Uh, Let's cut our visible policing budget and then up our up uh, our VIP protectors because well why not and that that alludes back to what you're going what are these guys planning why do politicians need up to VIP protection all of a sudden and why are they trying to take our firearms away from us oh, there's absolutely nefarious, there's a nefarious um, there's something nefarious going on in the background um, and and I think everyone needs to be worried about it. Absolutely. And again, as we look to wrap up this conversation, guys, um, you know, there are other provisions in this bill which are deeply problematic. Of course, the self-defense element is the one that really jumps out at us. But it also places so many significant restrictions on sports shooters and hunters. Um, and we'll, co we'll cover that in a moment. Uh, Zepi, I see you. I'll come to you on that. But also, there's another element to it. Remember, I said to you, there's two overarching elements that the, the, the viewer needs to bear in mind. The one is, of course, a complete uh, disregard and disdain for you and your safety and that of your family, um, dispossessing you of your right to defend life, liberty, and property. The other, of course, is the notion of government control. The 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 of, the the ongoing trend we've seen by the ANC goaded on by the likes of the EFF and other political elites of having the govern government become more and more pervasive, more and more controlling of more aspects of life. And this draft bill, excuse me, this draft amendment bill does exactly that. Setting up, for example, a, um, a, a uh, just bear with me, it, it's a particular a forum, a forum that it looks to establish, which again, it's more of the same. It's this idea that politicians establish these forums where they can have meetings after meetings after meetings, more bureaucracy, more red tape. 
and definitely making it more difficult for you, the ordinary person, the individual, to defend yourself. Zepi, let me come to you very briefly on that notion of making it difficult for sports shooters and hunters. Some of the, re the restrictions, I don't know if you want to quickly ch chat about those. Well, um, one of the other biggest ones is restricting the amount of number one ammunition we carry, the number of firearms and so on. I mean, honestly, we see through you. Yeah. We honestly do, you know. Um, we're not going to let this happen. Um, there is also this notion that, oh no, this sport is for old white men. Mm. The forgetting the majority, often yes, forgetting that actually the majority of shooters are actually females. Mm -hmm. And a lot of license holders right now, 60%, I'll put it to you, 60% are black. Mm. What? What are you trying to do right now? Uh what Absolutely. are you trying to do? It comes back to that initial question. Tim, let me come to you. Um, oh, yeah. just address these two elements for me, just very briefly. The one, of course, sure. is the restrictions on sports shooters and uh, um, hunters. Effectively making them the only people in the country who could have rights to have guns, and even then restricting mm -hmm. them even further. And then the other element, please, I want to talk to, to I want you, excuse me, to talk uh, uh, to is, again, the state and its overarching desire to try and control all aspects of society. Well, it's, it's, it's going to start with your self-defense, guys. And then you're, it, it goes back to that Nimola poem. First they came. First they came for the socialists, but I wasn't a socialist, so I said nothing. And then they came for the communists, and I wasn't a communist, so I said nothing. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to stand up for me. And uh, we're sitting with that same problem. We've got, we've got self-defense that's being gunned for. They've actually also scrapped entirely uh, firearms collectors. The Firearms Collectors uh, Association are the first guys that get nailed uh, every single time when these bills yeah. come through. So that, that's completely off the, off the cards. Um, and then they're restricting hunters and sports shooters. But at the end of the day, they're gonna, the hunting and the sports shooting is going to go as well. Uh, and that's, it's going to impact much more than just the individual that goes hunting. The, the hunting industry and, 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 uh, in this country brings in billions and billions of rands uh, worth uh, for com for local communities and for for the industry uh, every year. You're going to have local communities that are now suffering because there, there's local guides that go and take these hunters out. There's local um, communities that are involved in the preparation of the animal carcasses. And, and, and in many, many instances, when hunters come from overseas, for example, and they do a big hunt, a lot of that meat and, um, and skin and stuff like that gets, gets donated to the local communities. So they have food. Um, so it's, it's, it's far, it's, 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 it's a lot more far reaching than, than, than just, than just focusing on, on taking away a firearm. Absolutely. I must agree with them. There's some very interesting comments that have come through here, which I, I want to endorse. Um, uh, you know, Annette Beckett basically saying, you know, even back during apartheid time, black individuals were given the ability to own firearms. Again, this is not her praising apartheid, but neither am I praising apartheid. We're just making a broader point, which is you, you literally have a situation where this government is doing something even which the previous regime, evil as it was, was not willing to do. And again, let me, let me add um, personal uh, anecdote to this. My grandfather, my family comes from a very long line of gun earning, proudly gun earning South Africans. My grandfather had a wonderful collection of shotguns mm -hmm. that um, you know, were passed down, of course, to us in our family. So again, this notion that gun ownership in this country is a quote, white thing is absolute poppycock. And you've got to push back on it, exactly. which is exactly the point that Chase Els is making here on screen to say that that old stereotype, you know, of, uh, you know, the, the Mana in Court Brooker in Feldskunner, are the only ones who own guns is absolute nonsense. Yeah. Um, if I can, if I can nonsense. jump in there, um, yes, I, 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 I work at a very popular gun store in uh, Cape Town on on, South, uh, on Saturday mornings, and uh, the majority of the guys that are coming in are requiring ammunition or applying for firearms for self defence, and they're taxi owners. That's right. I can also government speak is, on this. Mm -hmm. Government is poking a big bear they don't want to. Be. The taxi industry in this country is one that obviously these guys do need some sort of, sort of self-defense for themselves. Yes. They are picking on the wrong guys and the taxi industry is starting to get involved in this fight. And uh, it's, it's, it's a fight they're going to lose, especially if they come up against the taxi industry. I cannot and begin to tell you the majority of white old women. 
It's not your white old ones that are doing it. It's 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 your it's your your taxi drivers that are that are essentially um, protecting and looking after and making sure that the the workforce of this country gets to work every day. Absolutely, and I was about to say, you know, I, I cannot begin to tell you the, the the amount of SMSs and old friends of mine, <clears throat> excuse me, who are still working in the tech industry, who've just told me how shocked and how shocked they are at this. Because again, especially if you've worked in that industry, um, I won't say much about this either. But especially if you've worked in this industry, you know that a firearm, again, being a legal firearm owner is an absolute imperative. What am I talking about, dear viewer? Again, I don't say anything that I can't back up. On this show, if you search on YouTube in particular, look for the Taxiland miniseries that I did. The Taxiland miniseries. And there's an episode I did, um, A Day in the Life of a Taxi Boss, where I followed a good friend of mine who is a taxi owner in this country. And there is a scene near the end that you'll see of just sort of some of the rifles and the handguns that are used in this industry. And I talk to them directly. And they will tell you from the horse's mouth why they have to arm up like that. Why? Uh, and again, it's all legal. None of these guys, and again, very few, I shouldn't say none, but very few of these guys are illegal gun owners. The overwhelming majority are legal gun owners because there is a, 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 a recognition that this a, a firearm is a tool. It's not an intimidation tool. It's not to be a scary bang, bang stick. It is a tool that is meant to defend life, liberty, and property rights. And this issue cuts across race. It cuts across all segments of society. Guys, we're in the last three minutes or so. I want to move us towards a conversation of what do we do? Because someone watching now is thinking, oh, my goodness, um, you know, I, woe is me. I can't do anything. I'm powerless. But that's just simply not true. There are things that can be done in this regard, especially things that can push back against this tool of over here, this actual douchebag. This guy does not deserve to win this fight. It's up to us to win this particular battle. So as that, with that smug look on his face, what do we do to beat this tool? <laughs> uh, Zeppi, well, first what, are you, of all, what are you guys busy with? Well, first of all, we've got your dear South Africa on board. We've got all these platforms. You go to the Girls on Fire page, you're going to find a link to, to, to comment, uh, to put through your comments. You're going to go to the GOSAF page. There's all these organizations that are putting forth um, their voices, and you can put down, this is the time for all hands on deck. This is not a black and white issue. This is not a woman or men issue. This is your right to life issue. This is the time where we stop talking, all this chit chat. No, let's do something about it. Stand up. If there is a march which has been organized, stand up, be there, fight for your rights, show your face, show your name, and tell the government you will not be left defenseless while they sit behind the high walls. This is a time for action. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tim. Again, Zeppi mentioning a lot of initiatives. Um, from your side, what do you know? Who's busy? Uh, what's being um, put together right now? I know Khidion Yupe, a good friend of ours, mutual friend of ours, mm -hmm. uh, is part of organizing a protest uh, march in yep. June 6th. If I'm not mistaken, I stand corrected on that one. I will correct it if I'm wrong. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll just, whilst you're talking, I'll look uh, for that message he sent me. But uh, what do we oh, do to, to fight back? Uh, as Steffi mentioned, um, and I want to say something that's very important, um, guys, just forget about the change.org petitions where you just click a button and you sign it with your Facebook name. Government takes that submission with its two million, you can be so proud that it's got two million signatures on it. Government will take that one change.org submission with its two million uh, signatures and will go, hey, that's one submission. Uh, you need to use organizations like Dear South Africa. Um, the Dear South Africa um submissions page and link is all over the place at the moment. Um, just type up Dear South Africa and it's the first one that comes in on the Google search bar. Um, so make your submissions through them where things actually count. Each submission goes through as an individual submission as, and as counted by government as an indiv individual submission. Um, there's, you've, you've got all your different organizations. You've got GOSA, you've got the South African Gun Owners Association, you've got Chasa, you've got Passa, you've got, the, you, you name it, the sporting representation that they, the, the sporting code that they represent, there is 
organization that uh, will represent that. Um, at the moment, there's, a, there's an organization called uh, the Safe Citizen Campaign, and that is being headed up by someone called Jonathan Deal. And if the name sounds very familiar, Jonathan Deal is someone who, for a very long time and very successfully fought off fracking in the Karoo. Um, he is an excellent campaigner and he's also a firearms owner himself. He is, um, he is being given the mandate and is working with all the uh, relevant uh, firearm bodies um, to, to coordinate things and, and get, get a message out there that's, uh, that's basically a united front. We all have the same message and um, we're all going to fight this. And the message is... And this is this is I want to state very clear, and Adele, if you are watching this, I hope you're watching this. We are not going to compromise on this bill. Every single time a bill has come through, there's been a compromise, and we walk and gun owners have walked away in the past and gone, "Yay, we won, we won." But you, they were the ones doing the compromising, and government didn't do a single thing to compromise. This time, there is not going to be a single compromising, and we're going to bring things to the table that actually lessen the gun laws and make things easier for government. The, right. We are not going to give up our guns. Absolutely. Right. From our I... dead hands, but there's not going to be a compromise. Not this time. The last time was the last time we did it and it's not going to happen again. Damn straight. Definitely co-sign that. And uh, just to correct myself on that information I gave out, it's that DSSA uh, sort of coalesced gathering that will be uh, at Parliament at the corners of Roland and St. John Street, and that's on the 1st of July at 12 p.m. Be there or be square. I know the Big Daddy Liberty Show will definitely be there lending our support. Guys, let's wrap up our um, broadcast here. Um, and with that being said, a reminder also that there are other organizations that are fighting this particular battle. I know Afri Forum has really briefed uh, attorneys on this particular issue. I know the Institute of Race Relations is also briefing attorneys on this particular issue. These are organizations that are fighting for when you, the faith, flag, family and freedom uh, um, uh, type society. And you've got to get behind them. You've got to get behind organizations like DSA. You've got to get behind organizations like Girls on Fire. And of course, GOSA, that's the Gun Owners South Africa organization. I mentioned them because also these are guys who I've had on the show. Guys, Tim and Zeppi, let me say thank you for being on the stream. Just very briefly, uh, if you have any social media accounts, how do the people reach you if you want to be reached there? I'm Tepi Mekwa on all platforms, uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and Instagram. You can reach out to me, um, send private messages or whatever the case is, and I will attend to you. Excellent. And uh, Tim, how do the folks reach you now? Uh, my, my social media stuff is fairly private, but um, you'll see a lot of my, my contact details and my name under a lot of press releases that are going to be going out. Uh, in the near future, uh, including this this last year South Africa press release that went out, uh, it was something that I sent out. Um, but yeah, you guys are welcome to contact me on my cell phone number uh, on zero six zero six zero five four five six two. Absolutely, thank you, Tim. Super appreciate that. That's Tim Flack, of course, and Tepi Mekwa, who were joining me on the show, guys. Thank you very much. It was going to be just a quick fire episode, and a reminder that the are, there are other organizations there um, are fighting this course. The Institute of Race Relations, I know, has briefed attorneys on this particular issue. They are in conversation with me. I do have a working relationship with them. And uh, we're going to take this issue on aggressively. You will see me on the streets of South Africa taking this issue on very aggressively. You'll see me, in fact, outside the offices of the asshat himself, Begit Tren. And trust you me, he doesn't want my large frame protesting outside of his building. So watch out, Peggy. We are coming for you as the political elite in this country, and we're drawing in the, a line in the sand and saying here and no further. You're not going to take away our God-given rights to defend ourselves and our families. You're not going to take away our God-given rights to life, liberty, and property rights. That is a sure thing that you can expect 
people like me and other organizations to actually get through too. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. Super appreciated. Uh, if you want to support the show, all of those details are in the description of the video. And by God, I will need your support because I will be traveling around the country asking ordinary South Africans what they think about this and trying to rally them especially in small town South Africa and in our townships, rallying them to get involved in this fight. This is the first of many a fight that pushes back against politicians who, as I described earlier on, are trying to put more and more regulation, more and more red tape, more and more control over our lives as the faith, flag, freedom and family type society. So with that being said, let me once again thank you for watching and um, I will see you tomorrow on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. It is pre-recorded. It is an episode where I bring you a very interesting um, a very interesting piece. Do not miss it. I will show you that terrorism in this country or rather the support for terrorism in this country is alive and well. An exclusive uh, image and video that I'll bring you tomorrow as uh, I prosecute another issue. Well, that being said, thank you so much, guys, for watching. This has been another vlog, Vlog 100. I'll see you tomorrow on the Big Daddy uh, Liberty Show. And uh, this has been Vlog 100. A reminder at the end of every, every episode for you to never trust a commie. <laughs>